I was five years old. This was back in 1973. And my, uh, my dad, uh, who passed away when I was 20, put a mask on my face and shoved me in the water. And uh, from that point on, I was, I was hooked on fish. But I will tell you uh, another story is when I started releasing tuna uh, about five or six years ago, maybe 10. People were looking at me and saying, what? <laughs> You're not so what, <laughs> releasing tuna. So here we have a, a nice specimen of a uh, common carp. This is probably about a pound. You can tell by its morphology, it's got this big vacuum-like mouth, very low on the food chain, so it, it doesn't eat other fish. Bluefin tuna is too good to eat uh, for sushi, though, so that's very hard to release. But I did that as well, we did that as well. And most people might think, oh, I'm eating a bottom feeder, it might taste muddy, it feeds on other fish poo, and, you know, it, it, that's not the case. I mean, culturing bottom feeders is, is really the future of aquaculture. So we have the tendency to graze the grass to its roots where, where we, we, we go. We've seen fishermen going out to sea, spending lots of money on fuel, having a crew go out with them for 12 hours and coming back with six fish. Everybody says that uh, in the last uh, 50 years, fish stocks have been depleted by 90%. That is, we have 10% of what we used to have. The next generation is going to inherit our mistakes. And the more we can do now to think about how we grow our food, really going to pay off in the future. Uh, Greece has a little fish left. Uh, the rest of the Med has very fish, a little fish left. We need fish. We, we, we love fish. It's delicious. It's healthy. But we want to be able to eat fish for the years to come and for our children to continue to eat fish for the years to come from the sea, not from an aquarium on land. Yeah, well, sure. Uh, quite often people feel tuna tastes better, especially compared to carp, but I was blown away by the quality. It had a wonderful flavor. And all he did was, you know, fillet it and throw it in a bit of oil and fry it up and there was no seasoning. Uh, and it was, it was very good. He put a special liner on the bottom of his carp farm. It's, the uh, clay. Uh, yeah. It's on the, on the, on the bottom. And, and he felt that it, it helped the carp not taste muddy. And it, it had a positive influence on the flavor of the fish. Tuna is very inefficient because they're a top predator. Carp, a bottom feeder, is very efficient. For every three kilograms, of fish feed that they were being fed resulted in a two kilogram carp. When you compare that to tuna, where it's, it could be up to 10 kilograms or more to create one kilogram of tuna, that's very inefficient. Another big issue talking about spawning is that the season that the governments allow the fleets to fish the tuna. In full spawning season, when they haven't yet laid their uh, eggs. Now, if you ask the fisherman, why do you do it like that? He says, because it's the easiest to catch, and uh, that's sad. This farm produces enough eggs and larvae to essentially distribute them throughout Turkey, which is amazing. Turkey's a big country. I mean, at least let it go through his, his first year of yeah. spawning. The problem still here is not what is done, it is the extent at which it is done, because today on tuna you have quotas. Every country member of uh, FAO, United Nations or ICAT has quotas. Right. Every county breaks those quotas. Italy goes above by 30%, 40%. Yep. 
Spain goes, breaks it by 30-40%, France breaks it by 20%. It's difficult to manage, but it has to be managed. Uh, and it could be managed, provided everybody uh, is ready to do their share and put proper regulations and enforce them. Because to put them on paper and not enforce them, you, you don't even bother to put them on paper. You know, what's the point? He had a windmill that was helping to pump the water. Free energy, helping to move water up and down and, and in and out of the pond. He was using some of the fish waste to grow vegetables. The water was flowing downhill and, and fertilizing farms. He was closing waste streams. And he's been doing this for 15 years. And I think if more people understood that eating lower on the food chain is a lot less energy intensive, it's a lot better on the environment, it's a lot better for nature. I think that they would be a little bit more conscientious and not be afraid to try eating carp. So at the end of the day, it's power for money or money for power whatsoever. Same old story. It's been going on since 10,000 years. Is aquaculture the answer? You know, is it going to replace what we get from wild stuff? I haven't answered that question. You know, I'm still answering. I'm probably going to continue to try to answer it all my life.